Hmm, get a tragic here, and welcome back to Arkham Horror. This is round three, and uh, yeah, we're doing all right. We've got three Doom tokens out. I haven't closed any Doom tokens, but we're in the position to do some stuff soon. We've got an Elder Sign already. We've got one character with six clues, one with four, another one with six. Now, one of the things I'm having trouble with in this eight-player game, this is actually the first time I've ever played eight players, is I don't really know what to do with everybody. I just have so many players. I mean, I've been camping these guys out here basically to try and just get blessed. He's been camping at the Twilight Lodge. But yeah, <laughs> I don't really know what to do. So what I would like to do is I don't think we're going to be possible. For starters, let's just move the first player marker across. It's Gloria is going first. Now, Jenny has come through and explored this gate. Now, the explored token means that as long as she doesn't move from this zone, she won't get sucked back in and she won't, uh, and she'll still be able to close this. So she has to fight monsters that come in there though. And I'd, because the Unnameable is a pretty high frequency gate, I would like to somehow get an Elder Sign to her. Now we have a number of characters at the Curiosity Shop, but the problem is the turn order. None of those characters really get to go before she does. So Gloria, for example, could pick up an Elder Sign if she's lucky. But next turn, Dexter Drake starts, which means Jenny will get her turn first, which means that she's going to have to sit here for two turns, which isn't too much of a bad idea, really. So she's just basically going to camp here for a while at the unnameable, just until I can get her an elder sign, which shouldn't be too hard because we have three people here. The elder sign uh, is in here, 25. We've actually discarded one, haven't we? No. So we've got 25 cards to get through uh, three at a time, and we've already picked up one. Now remember, because this is just the core set, we're actually, there's actually, I think, only four Elder Signs. But even so, with, uh, we can, we can uh, dig through the deck nine times, so we can get quite deep into that deck. Almost half of that deck can be explored, so I'm not really worried about that. So that's pretty much the thing. So we have an incredibly high frequency gate at the witch house, which is an easy one to close. We have a very high frequency gate at the black cave. So the black cave, the witch house, and it's actually at the unvisited isle is the really other one, the unvisited isle and the woods. But even so, I wouldn't mind closing the unnameable. That's pretty high frequency. But the one I'm worried about is the Black Cave and the Witch House. Okay, so let's just get into this. First thing we got is Gloria. Now, she is in the same location as these three guys. So she can do a trade. What have we got to trade? Now remember, because of Yog, because of Yog, all cultists have magical immunity, which means you have to share around these physical weapons. So, she's got six clues. So let's give Alien Statue and Let's see, has anyone got like a one-handed weapon? Because she's got Wither. Let's give Alien Statue. Who, who doesn't have clues? So there's, oh, shit. I just threw that in the discard pile. She has three clues and Caroline has four clues. What is this? This is a... Two movement and one sanity. So let's give that to Caroline. Because she can basically get that for free. Because she doesn't... She regains sanity. Okay, so she's got just magical weapons. So... 
Okay, so plus four one-handed automatic. Okay, so let's give this to Gloria. And that way she can use Wither in one hand and dual wield the automatic. See the little hand symbol? symbol? That's how many hands she takes to hold. I mean, she's got two things that she can get rid of. We'll give the... Shotgun. Yeah, we'll give the shotgun to Caroline and we'll give the Tommy gun to Amanda. And we'll also pull all our money. Uh, what have we got here? Maniac, physical resistance. Yeah, so she'll take. She'll take all the money from both those characters. That gives her 15 bucks. I'll just give them, I'll, I'll leave them uh, a couple of bucks each, two bucks each, I'll leave them. I'll give them three bucks each. Actually, no, that's, that defeats the whole purpose. So I'll take all the money and give that to Gloria and she'll go look for Elder Signs. Okay, now because she's looking for Elder Signs, you don't really need much here. I think we're gonna leave all her stuff the same. Uh, so she's just gonna move in here, your blammo. Now Dexter, again, I'm not really sure what to do with Dexter. I've just been sort of parking him out here I guess he needs clues. So where's a good place to go for clues? St. Mary's Hospital gets clues. And of course the science building. Okay, so I'll send... He has a sanity loss. He's got lost a bunch of sanity, hasn't he? So I think... He might start heading up to the asylum. So what have you got? He's got three movement. One. Oh, what's happening here? Now the black man, this is a curious thing. I mean, you roll dice equal to their current serenity. For every failed dice, they lose one sanity. Okay. If it's reduced to zero, they're devoured and the player must start a new character. Then it says, otherwise they gain one clue and draw one spell. So does that mean for every roll, they can gain one clue and draw one spell? I don't know. I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah, I, I can't find any quick answers on the geek. I'll have to make a post. Basically, the question is, do you gain a spell and a clue for every success you roll? Or do you risk being devoured to gain one spell and one clue only? Because that seems ridiculous. Whatever. Uh, there is a ghost here is my point. So if he heads up this way, he's going to get to hit by this ghost. I think what I'm going to do with him is actually send him one, two, three to Mary's hospital. He's got three speed. And I think I'm actually just going to drop his law by one and drop, bring his fight up by one. Meanwhile, Vincent, I think I'm going to leave Vincent in the church. Let's bring his speed down by one and I might bring his law will up by one. Meanwhile, we have Harvey Walters. I think he's gonna stay where he is again. So I'm gonna go one, two. Oh wait, I'm not actually, I'm gonna do this thing, aren't I? Necromonicon, exhaust and spend two movement points, law minus two check. So we'll put this down to two. We'll put his will up one for his two things. And then we do a will minus two checks. So that's four. Come on. 
Okay, he gets that finally. Okay, if you pass, draw one spell and lose two sanity. And draw one spell. That doesn't really seem worth it, does it? <laughs> we get a heal. Nice. And we discard the Necromonicon. You blink. Now, Jenny is going to stay where she is. So she's going to use... She's just going to drop her speed down by one. And she also has this. Spend two movement points and make a law minus two check. So what actually she might do is put a law up. Do two... She's got two movement points and do a law minus two, which is roll two dice. Come on. Beautiful. And she pass, draw one skill, and discard. You don't even get a, uh, a sanity lost. She gets plus law. Okay, nice. And Amanda. Now, Amanda, we've she got three clues. We've taken out all the all her money. Actually, you know, I was supposed to dig for elder signs, wasn't I? Five. Yeah, so we're supposed to have five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Beautiful. So she's also going to move in here. She's got nothing she wants to do. I think she's going to... She's got three focus, so I think I might just put this down here, give her a bit of extra sneak. Caroline Fenn is going to do the same thing. She's got a focus of two. Let's go speed zero. That's so unusual. Boom. And Mandy, she's actually in the other world, so she is going to become no longer delayed. And that's pretty much the end of her turn. Now, you don't generate movement points inside the other world at all. I often, uh, to make the game a little bit easier, I say you do generate movement points. Like, I've got a house rule is that you generate movement points and it's two movement between each zone. But I'm going to do the official rules today. So let's put a, a focus down because she doesn't need speed at all. Okay, so let's do our encounters. For starters, we do Goldberg. She goes one, two, three because she's activating the... These guys are all doing curiosity shops. Okay, Enchanted Jewelry, Nameless Cult, and Extra Movement. Well, I think she'll just take this. One, two, three. Spend three dollars and take the jewelry. I do love that movement one. Dexter is in the hospital, hopefully trying to find some clues. You sneak a peek at the medical records for a recent admission who was involved in a cult ritual. Pass a law zero check. So his law is four. So hopefully we'll get a clue out of this. Come on. Yes, nice. Pass a law check to learn something about the cult's methods. Gain one clue. Thank you very much. Okay, and he is at the church still. Noticing you are in the holy water, Father Michael tells you, take what you need, my child. You may search the unique item deck for a holy water card. Nice. Beautiful. He badly... Oh, he's got a one physical revolver. Okay. Now, Harvey, what have you got for us? He is at the Sanctum still. You're invited to take part in a gating ceremony. If you agree, spend two clue tokens and one sanity to make a law minus two check. 
If you pass, close one gate of your choice. If you fail, nothing happens. Okay, so this sounds like a good thing, but it's not. Each of these gates are actually on very high frequency locations. We don't want to close them. I would rather have monster surges and not have doom tokens. So I just, I'm just not going to do this. And he's already at four sanity, so he needs, he actually needs to start moving to the hospital. So I don't agree. I am not going to do that. Jenny is going to stay where she is, so she has a encounter at the unnameable because she's got the explored marker. She doesn't actually get drawn through the gate. And I'm pretty sure that means she, she does get the unnameable event. So we'll do the unnameable. In a dusty and decaying roll top desk, you find a mysterious manuscript. If you read it, make a law minus one check. If you pass, draw one spell. If you fail, the manuscript is nothing but the insane babblings of a previous renter. Stay here next turn reading it, but gain two clues. Well, this is a no-brainer because we're going to stay next here, here next turn anyway. So we want a law minus one check. So that's actually three dice. We want to fail this because I'd rather the clues than the spell, to be honest. Come on, fail. <laughs> okay, well, that's a pass. So we get the spell. Ooh, the mists. This is actually a very, very cool spell. Basically, you just use your uh, law as sneak. Very, very cool spell. I have to pass it off to a magic user, and it's got no sanity cost. Okay, what else you got for us? Amanda, she is going to draw one, two, three from the curiosity shop. She has five dollars. So I guess she'll take the enchanted knife. And Caroline Fenn is also going to go one, two, three. Wow. Well, we're definitely going to buy the tome for the king in yellow. If you pass, gain four clue tokens. That's a closed gate right there. And it only costs two bucks. Still no, uh, <laughs> still no, there's only 15 cards left. So pretty much half that deck is basically Elder Signs now. Okay, well that's everyone except for Mandy who happens to be in the uh, other world. So we need green or yellow cards Ooh, lots of reds here's a green and we're in the city of the great race so it is a plateau of lang pass a luck minus one check to find the gate back if so immediately return to arkham okay we want this badly we definitely want this so what are we rolling what are we luck is two so it's a luck minus one we get one dice come on you can do this hey what's going on my oh i got the success but i got distracted because my mouse has stopped working <laughs> hey guys uh when my mouse disconnected and broke uh plugging in the usb of the other mouse somehow screwed up my USB mic and it started recording all slow. You can listen to it here. I had to pillage my mouse from uh, my laptop. <laughs> Sounds funny. So I've sped it up, but it all had all these popping noises. There's, the video hasn't got much longer to go, so I'm just gonna leave it be. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm back. I had to pillage my mouse from uh, my laptop, my little crappy mouse. Okay, long story short, we passed that. So she actually moves straight back to City of Great Race and she gains an Explored Token. Now, because she has an Explored Token, she actually doesn't need to fight this monster. 
but she will need to fight the monster if she stays for a second round. Okay, so that's the end of that. Uh, what's my next plan? Sorry, I, I got all completely thrown off by my mouse stopping working. <laughs> well, that's everybody, isn't it? So let's uh, draw the next Mythos card here, Blamo. Okay, so Doom Token. And a gate goes to Unvisited Isle. Two monsters. So we now have one, two, three, four, five, six monsters. So we're well under the 11 limit. Yunk! Plateau of Lang. So second Plateau of Lang. Okay. Now this is a rumor. So these are really, really annoying because basically if we don't finish these off, we get absolutely huge problems. This one, for example, if we don't complete this, we lose all our Elder Signs. Now, there's two ways I could work with this. One is I could ignore this rumor and just not seal any gates, but I'd rather just pay the six and get rid of it. So what it's, uh, let me just move the monsters first. We have uh, hexagons, stars, triangles, and oblongs. There's a star here. That is a vampire and it's flying. So because there's no one in the connected street and he's on the board, he actually flies to the sky. Everyone else is a moon, 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 and circle. So there's no other movement. Actually been pretty good with uh, monster hunting. We should kill these guys next. Clue appears at the East Town streets. Very rare to get clues actually in streets. Oh no, this is an activity. So what am I doing? That's why. Okay. When this card enters play, place six tokens on it. Each player may spend clue tokens during the argument counter phase while in East Town streets to discard clue tokens from this card on a one-to-one -one basis. Ongoing effect. Roll two dice at the end of every mythos phase, beginning the turn after it enters play. For every one or two rolled, place one clue token on this card. If there are no two clue tokens... Oh, look at this. Everyone gets a unique item. If there are no clue tokens on this card, return it to the box. Each player draws one unique item. Wow. And if there's ten two clue tokens, then all Elder Signs are removed. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six. And we have got enough to do this right now. So we have four here and three here. So we're going to do that. That'll definitely get us our Elder Signs. And if we're lucky... Oh, Jenny. Yeah, unfortunately, Jenny is first. Actually, no. Uh, yeah, so fortunately, Jenny's first. So Jenny's still going to have to wait a whole turn. Okay. So that is the end of that. That is the end of this round. And I'll see you guys... Oh, I forgot to have the, the buttons at the top turned off. How ugly. Whatever. I'll see you guys next time.